Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on artificial neural networks training. If you guys remember in the previous lecture we have been able to cover the concept of an artificial neuron. We learned about the difference between our biological human neurons and our artificial neurons and then we went through the math behind it. We went through a single neuron model in action and we learned how to create or kind of come up with a decision either zero or one based on the inputs and based on the values of weights and also we have been able to cover how to build a fully connected dense artificial neural network okay so what i'm going to cover in and uh, right now is under the hood number two and then we're going to dig a little bit deeper into how do we actually train artificial neural networks we'll learn about the difference between the training data set and the testing data set and please know that this lecture as well is more of an intermediate level when it comes to the difficulty so please hang in there okay so what we do in general is that we collect our data set and then we generally divide our data into primarily 80% for training and 20% for testing. And please note that these numbers might vary. So we might, we might have, let's say, 75% for training and 25% for testing. And the main difference between the training set and the testing set is the following. The training data, which is the majority of the data, are used to train the model they are essentially used to update the weights, okay? So if you guys remember when we covered the model training, all what we're trying to do is that we're trying to find the optimal values of weights, right? So when we train the artificial neural network, we train it or we teach it with our training data. And then once the model is trained, what we do is that we test our model performance using the testing data. And that's the rest of the data set, which is 20%, let's say, of the data. And a very big difference between the training data and the testing data is that the testing data is type of data that the model has never seen before during training. And that's very important. And uh, kind of a metaphor um, when we train artificial neural networks is kind of similar to, let's say, when we, let's say, teach students, for example. When we teach students, what we do is that we provide them, for example, with, let's say, with the concepts, right? With, let's say, uh, slides, with the material, and so on. And then to assess their performance on the exam, we do not provide the exact same questions that they went through during training, right? When, like, the, the questions, maybe the concept is pretty much the same, right? But the question cannot be a copy-paste. And the idea here is that we want students to be able to generalize and not memorize. And it's the exact same fashion when we teach artificial neural network. We want to make sure that the network is able to generalize and learn the high level features of, let's say, images and not memorize. It's not just a memory dump. It's not like, you know, like memorizing, let's say, the pixels in an image and just you know, like dumping it again when we go ahead and test it. And that's why we have to make sure that the testing data has never been seen by the model during training. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover the artificial neural network training and testing process. Okay, so what we do is that we build our artificial neural network, okay? So when we build our artificial neural network, initially, all these weights, all these connections are randomly initialized. If you guys remember, all what we're trying to do when we train our artificial neural network is that we try to find the best values of weights. Like we're trying to find the optimal values of weights. And when we start, you know, teaching it for the first time, we don't have any historical data. We don't know anything yet. Like we just build our network. We connect all these neurons together. And all these values of weights are randomly initialized. It's just random. Okay. All right. And what we do is that we collect our training data. So now we have our image, which is let's say a dog, and we have our desired label, which is a dog here, for example, which is, we'll call it Y. So essentially for each of the image, for each input, we have a corresponding output. And we call that the training data. 
So let's see how we train our network. What we do first is that we feed in this image to the network, okay? So we propagate the image to the network. And then initially, because this network is not trained, it's like a little kid, it's like a little child who doesn't know anything at all. So initially, what happened is, is that the network will generate an output, will make a prediction based on the input, and the prediction we call it Y hat. And in this example, it will be, let's say, a cat. Again, because the network doesn't know the difference between a dog or a cat or whatever, right? So initially, the network will mess up. We'll just say it's a cat. And what we do to train this artificial neural network is that here I have my desired output. Here I have my ground truth. Here I, ha here I have the desired, essentially, label. Like, I want this network to learn that this image corresponds to a dog. However, right now, the network is, doesn't know, doesn't learn anything. It just thinks this is a cat. So what we do is that we calculate the error, which is the difference between what the model is predicting, what the network is predicting or generating, which is y hat, minus what's actually happening in reality. What's, what's the ground truth, we call it. And that's y, which is simply cat minus dog. So we take that error, and then we go back, and then we update the network weight, okay? And that's essentially the optimization process that we go through. And please note that artificial neural networks training or learning process, it's pretty much similar to humans. We humans, we do not learn in one shot. We actually learn over time. We learn through experience, right? It's like practice makes perfect, if you guys remember. So essentially in the same fashion, what we do here is that you will find that the error initially of the network is actually quite high. And then it drops after what we call it the first epoch. And that's the most, one of the important definitions actually going to be covering in great details in the next lecture. But essentially we teach these networks over a series of iterations or what we call it epochs. So when we update the network here weights once, we call that an epoch. And then what we do is that the network becomes a little bit better in the future. So we, again, feed in the input data, which is the dogs here. The predictions might be a little bit better. It might get closer to be a dog. So now it's not cat anymore. So the error will be reduced, right? So you will notice that by the second epoch, the error is reduced. And we keep looping over and over again and updating the weights over a series of epochs. And that's why generally you will notice that when we actually trained our artificial neural network before, if you guys recall, there was number 50 in there. And that's the epoch number. We start with one and then we update the weights. And then we go back, number two, we update the weights. And we keep over repeating over and over again until the error becomes very, very small. And when the error becomes very, very small, that means the network predictions matches what we really want. So now the network could generate an output, which is a dog. So dog minus dog is technically zero. So now that's good. That means the network was able to make predictions that matches our desired output, okay? All right, so let's go ahead again and summarize what we just described. So essentially what we do is that we take our data and then we divide them into training and testing, right? So there is a training process and then there is a testing process. So let's cover the training because we already, we covered that before in the previous slide, but let's cover it again here. We start with our randomly initialized network. We take our training data, which has had the training input X and desired output Y. The network is initially messes up. It will generate Y hat, which is my predicted output. What we do to train it is that we calculate the error signal, which is the difference between the model predictions and what actually happened in real life. We go back and then we update the network weights. And we keep repeating that process over and over again over a series of epochs. So that's the training phase. That's the training part. What we do afterwards, and that's a very important piece of information, we take this network, okay, and that's very crucial. So now we train the network over a series of epochs, right? And then we take this network, we freeze all the weights. So we take the network and now we have an optimized network. Now we have a network with the optimized values of weights, right? So we take this network and now this network is trained, okay? So this network initially did not know anything 
now this network is already trained. So we call it train network with frozen weights. When I say basically weights, that means the intelligence has been already captured in these weights. Okay. So what we do in step number two is that we assess or test the performance of the network on data, which is the testing data that the model has never seen before during training. So here in the training phase, we pass it along around 80% of the, um, of the uh, data. And here during testing, we only pass it along 20% approximately to test our assess our model performance. And then the output here will be our predicted output, which is Y hat, which is hopefully will match our desired output. That means the network was able to generalize and not memorize. All right, and that's simply summarize our training and testing process uh, for artificial neural networks. And that's simply all I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we're gonna go ahead and cover a very important, we call it lingo, AI lingo, which is simp simply the definition of learning rate, epochs, and so on. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and see you in the next one.